The use of Crunch is back in the game industry news these past few weeks, with NetherRealm Studios joining the illustrious list of companies like BioWare and Rockstar Studios as basically putting a lot of pressure on their employees. And once again, it brings up this debate. And what we're going to talk about is kind of the right and the wrong way to crunch, and is there some kind of happy medium between the two? When it comes to the game industry, crunch has been a big part of it, and it's a topic that can elicit strong reactions both pro and against it. And it makes it a lot harder to kind of break down the good and bad aspects of it. But if you don't know what we're talking about, the act of crunch is working beyond the normal hours of a job or project. If it's normally a 40 hour work week, maybe this time you work 60. Instead of 60, maybe it's 75. And any major industry, especially those that are built on time sensitive or having a hard deadline, will make use of crunch in some way, shape, or form. But when it comes to the game industry, though, it has been used in the AAA side, almost weaponized against its employees. Now, I'm still working on this post, which will either be up by the time you're watching this or shortly after, again, about how many people romanticize game development. This is not the job you do as your backup. And that kind of love and passion can become a hostage for a lot of people working at a major studio, with people saying, oh, you don't want to work an additional 20 hours a week? Well, again, I guess you're not serious about being a game developer now, are you? Or if you refuse it, you could become blacklisted, whether it's because your, game, your name is not mentioned in the credits, which again, that's basically your portfolio and your future jobs, or if someone calls over to your previous employer and they say, well, they refuse to work. I told them that we need an extra 10 hours, and they said no. Well, there goes another uh, potential employment. And when it comes to the AAA side, crunch can take, in, can take many forms. And as we were talking about a few weeks ago, or I think a few months ago with Rockstar, they jokingly, or maybe I should do that in quotes there, talked about having six months of crunch to finish Red Dead Redemption 2. And this is, again, very disturbing to hear. They've been talking about having over hundreds of hours of crunch with NetherRealm Studios. And again, the stories that we hear are like nowhere near the stories that are actually happening because those will usually be killed or are uh, locked behind NDAs and such. But crunch has become a major part of the game industry. And when it comes to the AAA side, it's usually seen as when something goes wrong. Excuse me. Like, if you've watched like any of like those uh, project-based shows on like Discovery or History Channel, again, pick them. American Chopper. Uh, again, there's just like dozens of them at this point. You always hear that, or something will always happen in the last minute that will force them to work, you know, overtime or an extra two or three days. And again, when you're dealing with a time-sensitive project. You can't magically make more time appear. And this is the same thing when it comes to the independent side as well. That if you're just a three-man studio, giving that three-man studio 10 million extra dollars is not going to make that game get done any faster. There's still only three people and 24 hours in a day. So you got to make up the difference somewhere. But the problem is that crunch, as it keeps being done to somebody, it has diminishing returns and can cause serious health issues. We've been hearing stories of employees suffering from depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, uh, heart attacks, and many other issues that come from making a video game. And again, you shouldn't be killing yourself to make a video game. And that's kind of the mission statement for our video today. There is not one video game that's worth dying over whether it's by playing it or making it. And like we said, when it comes to the AAA side, it has been used as kind of like a hostage uh, situation for a lot of people. 
because if also if one person decides to work extra, then that kind of conditions or everyone else is expected to work extra as well. And again, for a lot of people, that's where they stop with the discussion of crunch. It's evil, it's bad, we need to get rid of it, you know, case closed. But like I said at the beginning, when we talk about crunch, especially from the independent side, it can be viewed as a positive thing when handled correctly. So we're going to take a quick shout out to our Patreon backers and supporters, and we're going to come back with some more footage and talk a little bit more about when does crunch become positive, and is there a way to have that work for everybody? And now for a quick thank you to our Patreon backers, as well as to our current Game Wisdom sponsors. And if you'd like to continue this discussion on game design, be sure to check out our Discord channel, link down below. If you're a fan of Game Wisdom and looking for a little bit of collectible swag, anyone who donates $25 or more via Super Chat or on Patreon.com slash will get your hands on this lovely little Josh box. This is a hand detail box that comes with a USB drive containing 10 hours of some of my favorite podcasts done throughout the years. This is only available for the month of April 2019. Afterwards, we'll have to weigh in and see if people want more Josh boxes in the future. So if you're interested, be sure to get those donations in now before this offer runs out. Wait, why are we back here? Why, are, why don't we have any game footage? Well, that's kind of the problem, isn't it? There's not really game footage out there to represent the idea of crunching on a game. Again, when we talk about consumers, they only see the finished product. They don't know that you spent 80 hours a week for the last four months to get your game done, or if you spent, you know, two hours a day and you spend the rest of your time, I don't know, flying a kite while you were designing your title. And again, the concept of crunch is very hard to nail down, and especially when we talk about the independent scene. As we said in the last part, for many independent developers, you're dealing with very small teams of people. You don't have studios of workers. It may just be you and two other people, or even just yourself. And when that happens, all the money in the world is not going to magically get your game done. And crunch in this case can be a very important tool. If you're in the zone and you are working on a title and you know you know that if I can just get another two hours in and then this is done, I now have to look at it again, why not spend that extra time? The thumbnail for this piece should include an image or something referencing Stardew Valley. And the developer talked about spending, I think, four and a half, five years, somewhere around that, making the game on his own and relying on Crunch to get that game done. And like we said, when it comes to the independent scene, the passion of game development is a major fuel. If you don't work on this game, nobody else is going to do it for you. And if this is an idea that you want to get made, you can't just wait around and hope, oh, maybe somebody will take my crazy idea and turn it into a video game. Everybody has their own crazy idea. And when it comes to the independent side of things and where crunch comes in, it can be viewed as a positive. And I was on Twitter, and I think uh, that uh, Arena not, Arena.net, I think, what was her name? Uh, Jessica Price, I think? I forget. I'm sorry if I uh, misquote her name. She found she was found in my feed again, and she said something that I think works really well when it comes to the discussion of crunch. You should only crunch if it benefits you. And I'm going to extrapolate that and say that, that when we say benefits you, we're not talking about your game, we're not talking about your manager, or your shareholders, or your company. Does it directly benefit your life? And if it does, then yeah, you should be able to crunch. When I was uh, doing many of my Uber rides, one of the drivers who I had a chat with, he does uh, road work or road crew construction. And he told me that one of his favorite times is when they are called to do an overnight project. That's when they uh, shut down the roads. So let's say at like at 8 or 9 o'clock at night, they do work on them until like 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and then they have to open them for the morning rush. And the reason why he loved that was I think they get paid either time and a half or double time and a half for doing those shifts. And he loves that. 
because if you can work five six hours and make 10 to 12 hours of pay why wouldn't you do that and most importantly and this is the other major part when we talk about crunch it is short term there is an end there not an estimated end there is a literal end for when this is done and to me those are the two major parts of when crunch is positive one if it directly benefits your life as a person who's doing it and two if it's short term and I know somebody will say oh Josh is saying that means you should be able to crunch for six weeks instead of eight weeks no when we're talking about short term crunch we are talking at least a few hours at most a few days that's it if you have to get into weeks or months of crunching then something has gone terribly, terribly wrong with your game or your project. And there have been studies that have shown that the use of crunch has very quick diminishing returns. Again, you can maybe do one or two nights. If we're going to weeks, it is going to affect you. And that is very bad. The game industry, especially the AAA side, is known for having high turnover rates. Meaning, the person gets hired, they do their job, and then they quit, and then they never come back. And like we said in the first part, there's a lot of serious health issues about this. And many of the major studios simply don't care. Again, with that idea of the passion of game development. Oh, you quit? Well, I'm sure we can find somebody just out of college who would love to do this job for an additional, for less pay and more hours. Because they want the experience. But this is not how you run a successful company. And at this point, we're going to get, I think we're going to hit that point where if we hear from a AAA studio that says, yeah, we worked on this project, we got it all done, there's no uh, management issues, no crunch, everybody's loving and happy, and we're going to get back to work right now. The day we hear that, I think that's when that mythical meteor is going to come down and destroy Valve and remove Steam from existence. And if you're watching this in the future right now and that just happened, then somebody tell future Josh to come back and warn me about that. But to wrap things up for our video today, crunch is a very tough element, tough part of any kind of project. In short-term bursts, it can help and can save a project, but it can be so easily misused. And at the end of the day, again, there is no video game that's worth the suffering of the people making it to get it out the door. And like I said, if you want to crunch, it has to benefit the employee. And the stories that we hear of companies not giving overtime or additional benefits for people who crunch, that is vile in my opinion. That is when the whole idea of having a game dev union really needs to come into play. But like we said, if you're doing it for yourself, to benefit you, then yeah, you should be allowed to crunch. And again, if you want to crunch, make sure you still leave time to relax. Crunch is not meant to be for days or weeks at a time. And you can kind of get your head stuck in the weeds and not realize that you are killing yourself. I mean, I've spent many late night hours, as people on this Discord channel can attest to, trying to finish up projects and work. And while that is great, it can come back to hurt you, sometimes in small ways or sometimes in very serious ways. But with that said, we're going to wrap things up for our video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to suggest a topic for me to cover in the future, please don't hesitate to leave a comment and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. If you're looking for a book on design, my first title, 20 Essential Games to Study, is out now. It is available where most books are sold, and it comes in paper, hardcover, or digital copies. This is the perfect book for anyone interested in learning about game design, whether you are a student, enthusiast, or just a fan. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design. And come back later tonight for our regular streamings. 
But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.